Okay. We're live. We are live from New York City. I've been wanting to say that for so long. You really? have no idea. We are live on the party. You flew all the, the way up here for ten minutes, man. Yeah. Ten minutes. You do what it takes, everybody. It's not that far. Three hour flight. Get to the airport an hour and a half before. Yeah, it's a day for a little bit. It's a day trip. It's a day trip. Thanks going, for coming. I'm going right to the airport when we're done. Yeah. All right. Guys, my name is Alex Vidal. I am president of Related ISG International Realty, and I am host of the show that you're watching today, Inquiring Minds Want to Know. Uh, if you like what you're going to hear today, like it, share it. Let's get Ryan as many views. I want to break the record. My record is close to 7,000 views for wow. one episode. Let's break it with Ryan today. Like it, share please, it. Please. please break that record. Okay, we have a bet going on breaking the record, so let's see. Today's video is brought to you by Related ISG International Realty. If you're in Miami, Dade or Broward County, and you want to work for the best brokerage who's connected to the best brokers, not only in Miami, but in the country, call me, text me, email me, Facebook DM me. Let's do it. But forget me. We are sitting here with Ryan Sirhan, star of Million Dollar Listing New York, author. He's got another show, Sell It Like Sirhan. Yes. Ryan. How are you? I'm doing great. Your energy is infectious. I like sat down. I was like, all right, let's do this. And now I'm like, let's do this. Let's do it, man. Dude, I'm, a, I'm Cuban, man. It's in my blood. Hey, good. All right. I appreciate it. Ryan, yes. I got not uh, eight questions and a special request at the end for you. Okay, perfect. Fair enough? Let's all do right. it. Born in Houston, raised in Boston. Now you're in the Big Apple, conquering the Big Apple. Yeah. You're on a hell of a ride. Tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are today. Oh, man. How much time do we have? Um, 10 minutes. Yeah. I was born in Houston, bounced around a lot, kind of went to Long Island for a little bit, kind of grew up outside Boston. Um, I, the only thing I was good at was theater, right? In school, I was like, okay, sports, I was terrible, but I was, I was good at theater. Went to college in upstate New York. After that, I was like, you know what? I got to try this theater thing because um, I'll regret it for the rest of my life. So I'll go to New York City, I'll try that. That's what I did 2006 to 2008. Uh, I just ran out of money, all my savings that you like from you know from construction how, how, jobs. And how all old that. were you then? Twenty-one to twenty-three, oh, okay. right? So it's well, like twenty-one, so twenty-two to twenty-four, I guess. Um, and so those two years, I did everything I could. I hand modeled. I was on a soap opera. I played a clock in an off, 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 off Broadway show in a basement. Like okay. I did all the stuff you do as a you know trying to be an actor in New York City. But I ran out of money. Uh, sub, sub, summer of two thousand eight. Got my real estate license because I didn't know what else to do and a friend said it's the greatest thing in the world, real estate sales, boom, 2008, everything's awesome. September 15, 2008, started first day, Lehman Brothers files for bankruptcy, market crashes, that friend who told me to get into the business, quit, moves to LA, it's like business sucks, don't ever do this, and yeah, like, look, I'm not perfect to do. And I just started picking up the pieces from everybody else, all the other brokers who were getting out of the business, I just started picking up those pieces and I became obsessed with the idea that if someone didn't like a home, it wasn't because of my face. Right, two years acting in the city, uh, you learn what real rejection is like because it's super personal. It's because of your face. Okay. It's because of your voice. It's because of how tall you are, short you are, and that's hard to take. And he's very tall. Though, right? <laughs> I'm right. six feet. He's taller than me. Yeah. Um, and so I just realized that. Listen, it's just about the apartments, and it's a numbers game. I I am addicted to work. I'm gonna work my ass off and make this a volume business for me, and that's what I did. And now I'm here ten years later. And now we're interviewing Ryan. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Now, Wall Street Journal, Real Trends, ranked you and your team number two in the country. Yes. With, to me, it's mind blowing. 830 million in sales. Yeah. 830 million in sales. But that's not all, like we talked about, you have your two TV shows, you have a book. What systems do you have in place to not only get in the right mindset, but stay in the right mindset and go out and fight this fight that you fight every day? I think every day for me, and my dad taught me this when I was a little kid, is a race. Yeah. Right? And I talk about that in the book, that every day is a race. You just don't know what kind of race it's gonna be. It might be a marathon, it might be a sprint. It might be a sprint, then a decathlon, then a triathlon, then a marathon, and then back to a jog. Right? And so every day before I leave my house, I say, ready, set, go. That's always been like my mind, mental it's, mindset. It's right over there. Yeah, because it's, it prepares you, whether you know it or not, subliminally that it's gonna be a race. I mean, let's try to win it if we can. Um, and then the systems I have in place are really coming down to the team. I have a large team underneath me that helps with business and they're all incentivized to sell as much as possible. We have, a, we have five assistants that help us every single day and my job is to quarterback all day long. I've set the team up kind of like a football team. Okay. Um, uh, people have talked about teams in that way before so I'm not the first person to relate football teams to business teams but it really works. Right? Everyone can be a rock star in and of themselves but you have a quarterback and a coach and they drive the ship, but they cannot win without everybody else being awesome and doing their job. And that's really the system that I've created. And it started with me and one person, and now it's me and 61 other people. 
and by the way, you know, not to, I'm gonna, not to digress, but I'm gonna plug my team for a minute. If it sure. wasn't for the fact that I didn't have an awesome team in place, I wouldn't be able to leave for the day and come to New York yeah. and, and do this. Same. Um, I couldn't sit here. Yeah, right? you? yeah, even with 10 minutes. Now, what was your breakthrough moment that took your business to where it is today? And, and from that breakthrough moment, what can our viewers learn uh, that they can take their business to new heights? Breakthrough moment. Um, was probably figuring out how to structure my day, honestly, because I, I was kind of lost, especially there at the beginning, the first couple years in the business, because I'd look at my calendar in the morning, I'd have an appointment at 3 p.m., and then what do you do? The rest of the, you're like, there's no boss. You go to the boss, and the boss is like, go sell. Right? I was told to post ads on Craigslist or meet people on the streets. That was how you got business in New York City or work your network in your sphere of influence, and I, I didn't know anybody. Not from here. My network was in like Colorado. <laughs> like, that doesn't help me. Steamboat Springs, tiny. Oh, like I, I wasn't popular in school, so I didn't have these like school friends or college friends that were wanting to do real estate deals with me. So I had to figure out how to structure my day, and that's also a big part of the book because I feel like a lot of people are probably in that same position where they're like, I, I want to sell more, but I don't know anybody. I'm not from here. I don't really know what I'm selling. Like, how do I do that? So I came up with a system called Finder Keeper Doer, which is really really important for me, and I've always done it. And I, you know, my team does it, and so that's making sure that you are a CEO, CFO. And COO of your own business every single day. And for me, that's finder, keeper, doer. So at the beginning of my day, I put on my imaginary finder hat and I would only be a quarterback. I would only be the CEO. I would just prospect for like two hours or I'd think about my business. And I would force myself just to do that. Middle of the day, I'm the keeper. I'm just thinking about the money or the money I don't have, right? Where I'm gonna advertise, how I'm going to build the business from a financial point of view, which a lot of people don't think about until it's too late. Um, and then the rest of my day, I'm the doer. I'm the foot soldier, I'm doing that work. Now I've got a structure to my day every single day. Finder, keeper, doer, without a boss having to tell me what to do. And that really was a turning point for me. Okay. Awesome, that's great information. Now, you talked about your father. Uh, what was the one person who made the biggest impact on your career and why? Oh man. Uh, there may be many, I have several yeah, in my life, yeah, along yeah. the way, right? I would say, I mean, my dad for sure, right? Because he taught me the power of hard work and not quitting. He made me play every single sport known to man growing up because he couldn't understand why I was ter so terrible at sports. Mm -hmm. So he thought maybe it's not baseball, maybe it's football, no, not that, maybe it's basketball, no, not that, maybe it's tennis. Um, and you know, the never giving up. But I would say like one of my first clients took a year to close and he was so brutal and never responded to me ever. But I followed up with him like crazy. I talk about him in the book too. Uh, I call him Mr. X okay. in the book. Um, and that deal taught me the power of persistence, perseverance, the power of follow up and just not giving up in business and closing him taught me that like, I can close anybody. Yeah. I might not, obviously there's definitely people that I can't close. But you have to think you can. But you right? have to think you can. You have to go into every game saying, I'm gonna win this game. If you go into it saying, well, maybe they're not serious, maybe they can't do that, then like, you've already quit. You're like running that race with cinder blocks tied to your feet and I don't know. You know, a lot of people ask me, how did you get Ryan to go to agree to go on your show? I'm like, you asked I, I asked, that's it, I asked, right? And, and if you go into my Instagram messages, there's a million people that have reached out that I'm, I'm literally water torture, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You just gotta ask, the answer's always no unless you ask. Now you've done an amazing job of building your brand. What advice, um, where are we? I'm, I'm, I'm all excited, I have so much energy, I was nervous with this. You've done an, an amazing job of building your brand. How did you start and what was the single biggest thing you did that made the most impact on your brand? I mean, listen, I would be lying if I didn't say that the TV show mm -hmm. was, was big for me, obviously. It accelerated my career very, very fast. But at the same time, the TV show didn't make the phone ring. It's, it, I thought it was going to. It was like, boom, I'm on a real estate reality TV show. People are going to call me left and right. No one cares. Like, no one called. And when was the last time you picked up the phone and called someone that you saw on TV? Other than they're reaching out to me today, but yeah. other than that, like, you don't pick up the phone and call Kendall, right? You're, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. And so I had to then use the show to go and open doors. Okay. Um, and that was a big part for me in, in establishing the brand. But also, uh, really having other people represent me was a big thing. So instead of just me pushing out Sirhan, 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 I then had one other person who said, Sirhan, and I'm there too. And then two other people saying, Sirhan, Sirhan, and they're there as well. So that way, like you're like an octopus, right? Trying to be in as many different places and as many different times and learning how to leverage other people and their voices for yourself is how you hit a mass group exponentially. That's, we were talking about the growth of our brokerage earlier. That's how we did it, raving fans. You create one raving fan, they tell everybody about you and- Just referrals. And right? there you go. 
Now, I have a lot of teams in my company and I have a lot of agents that want to build teams. Sure. Uh, and you have teams what New York, California, Miami as well. Yeah. Um, what advice can you give to agents that want to go from being a single agent to becoming a team? You have to have the business first. Okay. Right? The biggest mistake that people make when setting up a team is they think that more people are, are going to make them more money and more business. More people create more problems. If you just have people sitting there without anything to do, then you've just created more problems. So, you know, I created a team because I wanted to get into a different price point. The deals that I was doing in New York City when I started were a thousand to twenty five hundred dollar a month rentals okay. because that was where the bottom of the barrel, New York City. Brokers who have real business don't want to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But for me, I, was brand, I, don't, I didn't know what to do. So sure, I'll show someone apartments for $2,000 a month. If they like something, the commission on that is $2,000. I split it 50-50 with the house. If I show them apartments for one day, I make $1,000. Not thinking about taxes, but I'm like, I make $1,000? Yeah. No one awesome. ever thinks about taxes. Right, exactly. So uh, that was crazy to me. But I didn't want to do those types of deals all the time. So I And I knew that success begets success. So I wanted to scream from the mountaintop my best deal ever. So the minute I did a deal for $3,000 a month, that's, that's what I talk about. I'm the broker who does deals for $3,000 a month and above. You know, use me. Everything that came in below that, because I don't want to say no to business ever, now I have Yolanda, right? Once Yolanda got too busy and I got into that $4,000 a month category, then I had to get Bill. And I slowly grew that team because I wanted to be in a different price point. And that's it. And the key is make sure you have the business first. Yeah, always. Great. Now, lightning round, one word answers. You ready? You got Four. You got it. Best ROI for leads? Um, oh. We didn't practice these questions before we got started. He wanted to go on the fly, which I love. For me, it's been the gym, honestly. Is that like where, where I get leads, you mean? Yeah, the, the best ROI. If you, if you had to put your money, so, and it could be the gym. You spend, what, 200 bucks a month in the gym? and maybe yeah. you know? But it, for me, it's been the gym. For other people, maybe it's church. For other people, maybe it's like daycare. You want to find that place where you have something in common with the person in front of you. Yeah. Not just going to networking groups. Right? Not just going onto the street or going to other parties. Like, what do you have in common? For me, when I started, it was, it was the gym. Uh, for other people, it might be something else. Right. All right, fair enough. Favorite social media platform? Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube? Instagram. Instagram. Although I do have a vlog, you should watch it on YouTube. <laughs> Our YouTube team is watching plug this right it, now. Plug it, go ahead. YouTube.com slash Ryan Serhant. Go there right now. I think a new vlog just went live at 4 o'clock. There you go. Boom. Fear. What I've realized in doing all these interviews that I've interviewed billionaires like Gil Dezer to, to you know, regular agents, everybody's got a fear. Yeah. What's your fear? Fear of failure every day. Like most people, right? Fear of going back to where I was 10 years ago, sitting on the subway crying because I was broke. Like I don't ever want to go back to that moment ever. Um, and that fear becomes relative. And I talk about that a lot in the book too, finding out what, what makes you afraid and then using that as fuel for the fire to run that race every day. Oh, great. One daily practice every agent should be doing to change your business. You start your day the night before. Okay. Yeah. So for me, that's cleaning out my inbox. It's getting ready, going through my appointments, reconfirming everything the night before. So when I wake up, I'm not like, oh, where's coffee? Okay, what's going on today? I've already started that process before I ever went to bed. I wake up, I know exactly what's happening that day, and I'm already ahead of everybody else. Love it. Last thing, tell us about your book. You have... Again, your business, 830 million in sales with your team. Yeah. You have two TV shows. Yeah. Now a book. Yeah. What compelled you to write and the book? A uh, and a book. book. This is the book. Look how beautiful this is. He's Sarah got a lot of weird too. Sarah hands. Um, the book this is my little baby. It took me so long to write this thing. The book is everything I know about sales. It is my agent playbook that I was writing for nine years for my team, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone in my offices that I, if I did a deal and I learned something from it or if I said something to a client and it help them understand something differently, I would write it down because I would forget. And so I just created this agent playbook on how to negotiate, how to lead gen, how to deal with buyers, how to deal with sellers, how to, how to talk to people, how to structure your day, how to have discipline, right? Um, and all of that turned into my agent playbook. And then I did Sell Like Sir Hannah Bravo, the yeah. show this year. And that then helped me turn all of those ideas into selling, not just real estate, but selling anything. And then I realized that I could help a lot of salespeople with the pain and trauma that I've been through in this business over the last decade and put that into a book for people to actually be helped from it, right? I didn't want to write a fluffy reality TV book. I wanted to write a book that people could actually use, highlight, like rip out and keep in their pocket because that, that really made sense to them uh, and that's what I want. You got, a, you got a girl cheering over there. She must have just got a big deal. I no, love I it. no idea what she said. People Ooh. freak out. Where can they buy the book? Buy the book everywhere books are sold. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, everywhere. You can go to sellitlikesirhan.com. All the links are there. The audio book is also out. Uh, I read it personally. It took me two days, so it's super dramatic. 
the ebook, everything. Yes, go buy it, read it, love it. Send me feedback, Ryan at ryansirhant.com. I love getting email feedback. I write back to everyone. I just think it's the coolest thing. Awesome. And he, and he does reply, by the way. He, he replied to me. Yeah. yeah Last favor. Yeah. I, I have found out by announcing to everybody that I'm interviewing you, you have quite a few fans. Oh, sweet. So congratulations. No problem. Uh, I don't think one of them could be any bigger than I have three administrative assistants. One yeah. of them, her, her name is Stephanie. Stephanie. Can you give Stephanie a shout out? What's up, Stephanie? Thanks for letting your boss come up and see me. Um, hopefully you're holding down the fort. <laughs> She is holding down the floor. Ryan, this far exceeded my expectations. Sweet. Today. Thanks for coming to New York. Oh, I love it. Worth my flight up. Worth my flight down. Guys, like I said, like it, share it. And if you want to work for the best brokerage in Miami, aside from Nest Seekers, related ISG International Realty, thank you guys for watching. Let's break that 10,000 mark. I'll see you later. Now, Ryan, yes. do whatever you want to do because we're still live until I, uh, I turn this off. You guys are the best.